Good morning, you're watching Doordarshan News and this is the news for hearing impaired. I am Nancy Kohli and with me is Meera Bhatia. Let's begin with the news in detail. Two important bills that seek to replace ordinances to keep state boards out of the ambit of the National Eligibility Entrance Test for this academic year will be introduced in the Lok Sabha today. Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs said the two bills include the Indian Medical Council Amendment Bill 2016 and the Dentist Amendment Bill 2016, which will amend the Indian Medical Council Act of 1956 and the Dentist Act of 1948. He said the Business Advisory Committee of the House had fixed four to six hours for discussions on the bills. The Centre had in May promulgated the two ordinances to keep the state boards out of the ambit of the Pan-India Medical and Dental Entrance Examination for 2016. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar said that passing of the two bills will be government's top priority. The day one of the monsoon session of Parliament yesterday saw all political parties uniting on taking up the prevailing situation in the Kashmir Valley after terrorist Burhan Wani was eliminated by security forces. The issue was taken up for a short duration discussion in Parliament yesterday. The government has squarely blamed Pakistan for the unrest and disturbed situation in the Kashmir Valley. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh has assured that whatever steps the government initiates, it will do so after taking the House in confidence. Leader of the House Arun Jaitley attacked Pakistan saying it has never reconciled with the fact that Kashmir is an integral part of India and hence they go to every extent to disrupt India and Kashmir's progress. Cutting across party lines, members demanded that sincere steps be taken to restore peace and normalcy in the valley. Curfew continues in 10 districts of Jammu and Kashmir for the 11th day today. Security forces and state administration are making all efforts to control the situation in the state. Except for some minor incidents, the situation is by and large normal. Meanwhile, both the centre and the state government are working jointly to ensure availability of medicines and other facilities in hospitals. Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti took stock of the situation at a high-level meeting with top officials yesterday and appealed for peace. Information and Broadcasting Minister Venkaiya Nairu has spoken with Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister regarding reports of ban on newspapers. Clarifying on the reports, the State Chief Minister said that there is no such ban on the publication of newspapers. Amidst these reports, Badgam SSP Fire's loan has been transferred. At least 10 CRPF commandos belonging to the elite Cobra Battalion were last night killed in a Naxal IED blast in the jungles of Bihar's Aurangabad district. The Jawans of the Cobra unit were ambushed in the IED blast after which an encounter started between the two resulting in the killing of four Naxals. Arms and ammunition have also been recovered from the site. The Jawans belonged to the 205th Cobra Battalion and were deployed in the state for conducting anti-Naxal operations. This is one of the biggest casualties of the elite Cobra unit which has been raised by the CRPF for undertaking special jungle warfare operations. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh spoke to Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar this morning regarding the ambush on the CRPF team in Aurangabad region. The Home Minister has instructed the DG CRPF to rush to Aurangabad to assess the situation post the ambush. He also expressed his heartfelt condolences to the families of the martyred CRPF personnel. He prayed for the speedy recovery of the injured Javans. The National Green Tribunal has directed the Delhi Government's Transport Department to deregister diesel vehicles, private or commercial, that are more than 10 years old. The Tribunal has directed Delhi's Regional Transport Office to give a list of all the deregistered vehicles to the Delhi Police to ensure the implementation of its order with action on roads. The RTO is also required to put out a public notice over the matter. 15 years or older, petrol vehicles are already banned in Delhi and the latest order merely represents the green watchdog taking its battle against alarming levels of air pollution in Delhi a step further. 
The tribunal had banned the plying of 10 years and older diesel and 15 years and older petrol vehicles last year. The order could not be complied with effectively. The tribunal also pulled up the authorities for failing to implement its order. The Indian Olympic Association has felicitated rear-bound Indian athletes and thanked the government for its support. IUA President N. Ramachandran said he is looking forward to the time when the association won't have to take government's grant and will be self-sufficient. Sports Secretary Rajiv Yadav said unlike in the past, the government is proactive and help the athletes in every manner possible, including relaxing the disbursement procedure where now 90% of money gets disbursed at one time. And that's all the news for the moment. Thanks for being with us.